Hey everyone, today I'm doing a bit of a review video on the Viver faceting machine that I just picked up a couple weeks ago. Bit of a disclaimer, this is the first time I've used a faceting machine, so I don't know if the concerns I have are present in, say, an Ultratech or Facetron. So in this example, I'm cutting a Montana Sapphire on said Viver faceting machine. I've got it loaded up onto the DOP, and the DOP is in the manipulator. Now the first challenge I ran into on this journey was the number of facets a design has. I started with a round brilliant, and that has 73 facets. That's a lot, especially when you're just starting out. I decided to take it down to a 37 facet design for this particular piece, but before that I cut a few of these 25 facet designs so that I could kind of get used to how it works. This was one of my first tries and it just wasn't turning out the way I was wanting it to. And that's why I went down to this 25 facet design. It turned out really well, I'm happy with it. And so I moved up to the Easy Octagon and grabbed a sapphire. Starting with cutting the girdle, the machine does work. Now, one of the drawbacks is the height adjustment, which you can see in the top right corner. You have to take it off to cut the girdle at the 90 degree angle, however, for some stones, that's too low, and for other stones, like this one, it's just about right. All in all, though, I've been able to facet five or six gemstones now, and cut the girdles just fine. While we're talking about the height adjustment and mass assembly, this is your height adjustment. You can make... Adjustments to your angle and a secondary adjustment using the pin. There's a fine way to fine tune each one of them. Though it can be difficult to find the exact adjustment that you were using before when you change lap grits. There's that secondary locking bolt on the fine tune adjuster, but it doesn't really lock into place and you can screw deeper in once it comes into contact, unfortunately. But it does give you an idea of where you need to be. Then you just set your height and go. That top knob will do a fine tuned height adjustment. Now this here is a concern I have, where the mast isn't perfectly straight up and down on my machine. And that seems to me like it would cause a imperfect cut angle each time. I'm not sure how to fix that myself. If anyone out there has any knowledge on how to fix this problem, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Here's a closer look at the height fine-tune adjustment as you twist it clockwise. It'll lower just barely. Now as you can see with my unit, as I move it to one direction, it'll suddenly touch the plate, which tells me that it's tilted slightly. With that said, I do want to point out that I have been able to successfully facet several gemstones, and they could look a lot worse. So, for saving nearly 90% compared to, say, an Ultratech, I'm not going to complain too much about that detail. Now, for this demonstration, I am using a Montana Sapphire that I picked up locally in town, and 
I'm starting out with a 400 grit diamond centered disc. I find that that disc works really well for the initial shaping and forming of the gemstone. After shaping, I then switched to a 1500 grit and then a 3000 grit diamond center disc. And I'm really happy with how the facets are turning out on these stones. After this, I switched to a copper lap that I picked up and then scored. And for these, I went straight from 3,000 grit to 14,000 grit. I think you want to get a in-between, but I only have two discs, so 50k and 14k is what it was at the time. I charged the disc with the 14k diamond paste and probably used far too much of it. So then I spread that out with my finger. It was kind of a messy process. Invent a spatula or something for it. And after that, I use a piece of corundum to burnish the disc and push the diamond particles down into the copper. This also work hardens the copper. I did this several times before utilizing the discs to work on my sapphire. So then I used the 14k disc and then the 50k disc and I had to then transfer the gemstone. Now if you don't have a transfer jig, which I didn't at the time, I used a piece of clay to hold the gemstone and the dop, and then slowly super glued them together. This is time consuming, and yeah. But then I was able to facet the other side. As long as the faceting diagram isn't too complicated, I found it fairly self explanatory. And I gotta say, this machine was really great for me as a beginner. I have no complaints, and I think it was a fair use of $500 for the setup so far. Last but not least, use the 90 degree angle thing to get your f table on your gemstone, and you're good to go. As you can see from this sapphire, it came out fairly nice. And the trillion I showed earlier I'm happy with, plus some others that I've cut. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them down below. And have a wonderful week. Until next time.